if you would ever bust solo raps okay. over beats from other cats. Oh, okay. okay. You do that? Yes, 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 yes. yes. See, um, that's what I was talking about with the album I was doing, uh, the MCA. Um, of course, Pete, right? P. Ross. Dre. Rock Wilder. High Tech. I like it. High Tech. Oh, it's for you. It's for you. The Diary album is, is just more so his vocal album. He wanted to work with other producers and, you know, and show his his rap skills. He wrote his rhyme and, and also sequenced the song, changed the sequence of the song to fit, you know, what he was doing. That dude was super lyrical and had a vision, like even picking beats from other artists, he knew how to write to those beats and make them his, you know? That's pretty dope to me for another cat that I look up to to be like, yo, I need you to do some work on my album. You know what I'm saying? Well, he always said that when he got on the mic, he had an altered ego. And he was not himself on the mic. He was very, um, like, flamboyant and confident. And th the Dilla that we knew, you know, away from that was very humble, very quiet, you know. Back in the days when I was a young nigga, before my Uncle Al let me pull a gun trigger, you can find Dilla. He was talking about diamonds, bitches, fucking giant cars, young flossing. That's just true. It was like some Tupac shit to me. He was working, man. The DJ rock a party, you know, type of vibe, the way he grabbed the mic. However the energy was in the music, he always matched it. First, let me introduce myself. My piece call me Dilla. Known to write and produce myself. Also, I'm a pimp by nature. We're tall, though. Oh, far more than the NBA does this. Dilla. Motherfucker, get the name right now. <laughs> Well, Dilla found some crazy software for backing up his drives. And it was made by a small company on the East Coast. Almost no one bought the software, okay, except for him, maybe a handful of the people. And so I started making all these phone calls back to the studios and finally figured out this software called Mezzo. Turns out the company went out of business. So you couldn't even get the software anymore. The clock was ticking. If we couldn't find the software to get the stuff off the drives, it's gonna be locked up like the Ark of the Covenant, like just, you know? And so we're like, how do we get this stuff off of here? I finally got the software. We opened up the tapes and there, sure enough, there were all the sessions, like all the songs, all the versions, and like a million versions, man. Like, so we had to figure out, okay, what was he thinking? And it took freaking like 10 years, man. You know, it took three or four years of trying to get J-Rock to go through the, the tapes and, and dig out the right takes that he thought were right. But this is the official, you know what I mean? This is the last piece of the puzzle. You know, we did our best to fill the fucking cracks in. At those points in the past where I could have given up that I decided not to give up because I believed in the man and I believed in his music and I ultimately believed in the way that he worked with people and I felt that I owed it to him to see this one through. How am I gonna play a beat for another producer that I'm heavily influenced by? But he know I have my own thing, and I, I think that's obviously why he even invited me to be on this project. I played those two tracks, he was like, yo, those, that's it right there. I made diamonds, like, as soon as he walked in the door, you know what I'm saying? When he walked in the door, I just started fucking with the record and shit. He was like, oh, fuck with that, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, anything you need me to do to him? Like, nah, just do what you do. So I did what I did, and played his vocals, and that was it. <laughs> He knew how to hire the right people. And I was watching him going, how's this guy doing this? Like, he knows when to, when to lay off and just let people be themselves. I started understanding that Dilla looked at things like symbiotically. You know, all of his partners were just extensions of himself. And he was really good at that. Like, even with this song on the album, The X. All he really did was uh, pick me up, he drove around, listen to some music and shit. And then we went to the studio. By the time I got there, I had the con. I knew the concept. By the way, he was just speaking about the music and what he was playing me before we got there, and then just left me alone. You know, making it look like uh, you did it yourself, but the whole time, like he was the puppeteer. You know, like, look what you can do. Look what you're doing. Oh, oh, it's the sickness. Ah, 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 ah. Well, I 
won't even say just Detroit because Detroit is definitely influenced by Dilla, but I think the world is, is influenced by his music. Like, especially not even producers, we speaking of like musicians, like drummers, bass players, uh, piano players. It's a lane that the Detroit boys got, you know, there's something about it and he was able to bring it all the way to life through producing, not just making a beat, but producing a song that made people feel good everywhere. I just worked with a guy this week who's super talented, Blood Orange, Dev Hines. You know, we just did his record and he was talking a lot about Dylan. What did you know about him and how was he to work with? And I worked with Animal Collective this year. Same thing, you know, like, oh, we like Dylan, like the low end, the punch, okay? Or we'd go out to a club in you know, Tom York and Nigel Godrich, where he's playing Fuck the Police. You cannot ignore the range that he has. He just embodies just so many different rhythms. So it's like when he when he approaches something, it's just like, it's always Dilla. And man, I was using everything I had learned from watching him, dude, by being around him and watching his style of the way he approached things. You just create, because that's what you're born to do, and that's what Jay fucking did, especially when we got in Studio A. Man, that magic was incredible. This is Dilla in his own words, showing a very, you know, multifaceted character. And some of it's vulnerable and, and sweet, and some of it's brash and arrogant, and I think that all of it can live together.